in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum. How are you today? I wish to see you all back in school again. May Allah bless us all. Today's lecture is from English Grammar and Usage for Class 5. The topic for today is Countable and Uncountable Nouns. I'm your teacher Zari. I will try my best to explain the difference between countable and uncountable nouns so that you can use them further in exercises and in your daily life. Dear children, English grammar is an important part of English language learning. You need to pay full attention while concepts are discussed. I hope you have grabbed your pens and notebooks. Do note down important points. Are you ready? Let's start. Nouns. You must have been studying about nouns since class one and you should know what it is. Yes, that's very good. It is a naming word. It tells names of everything around us like people, places, things, emotions and feelings. Nouns simply helps us in knowing the names of all of these things that we see around, feel around or we can find all around us in the world. Nouns have different kinds and today we will talk about them. The two main kinds of nouns are common noun and proper noun. Common noun is a general name for all the things belonging to the same category like cat, girl, school and proper name is a special name of a person, place or thing. When we call out a proper name, we have a surety about the person, place and thing we are discussing. Today's topic is about countable and uncountable nouns and they are started under the umbrella of common noun. Countable and uncountable nouns. Let's see what are they. Proper noun and common noun. I hope you need to have a clear idea about what is proper noun and common noun so that you can easily talk about countable and uncountable noun for in further detail. Proper noun, as you can say, is a special name. They have a name that can be called easily and that can make it sure whom we are talking about. So in short, it is a special specific name of person, place or things. Common name is the thing that do not actually tell about the specific name of things, but they talk about things, places or people in general. If I say a girl is standing in the garden, you may have an idea that a girl is standing there, not a boy or not a cat or not a dog, but you will not know which girl I'm talking about. But if I say Sarah is standing in the garden, you will have no doubt in knowing whom I am talking about. As you can see the examples of common noun, car, country, singer, drink, app, they all suggest name of things but they do not specifically tell what are these names for. So these are the general names which are not specific. Car is a common but when I say Audi, that's a proper noun. Country, common name. But if I say England, it's a proper noun. Drink, Pepsi. Students, so you're very clear about common and proper noun. Let's move on to the next one. That is countable and uncountable nouns. So the first thing that you need to remember is that countable and uncountable nouns are studied under the umbrella of common noun. We do not study proper nouns for countables and uncountables. I cannot say Pakistan or Pakistans. 
I cannot say Kaidiyazam and Kaidiyazams because proper nouns are one. So what are uncountable nouns? As the name suggests, nothing that cannot be counted like one, two, three, hundred or thousand. Look at the example, music, information, rain, water, all these things suggest the name of something, but they do not tell how many things, and what quantity or what measurement is involved. On the other hand, countable nouns suggest the things that we count can count very easily with the help of numbers, one, two, three, four, five. Look at example, a cat, a dog, that suggests one cat or one dog. Or two cats, three umbrellas, four brothers. So things that can be counted easily are called countable nouns. And that that cannot be counted easily are called uncountable nouns. For uncountable nouns, we always have to make a guess. And for countable nouns, we can surely tell about the exact quantity. I hope so far you are a little bit clear about the use of and the concept of countable and uncountable nouns. Now let's see a picture presentation of countable nouns for better understanding. In this picture, you can see there are so many things and you can tell me easily how many things are present on this picture. If I ask you how many pencils are there or how many cucumbers are there, lemons, apples, dog, tree, you can easily tell me in number because they can be counted. So countable nouns are that you can count easily. Uncountable nouns. Now look at this picture very carefully. Flour, milk, sugar, butter, chocolate, soup, meat, juice, rice, water. All these things cannot be counted in terms of counting like one, two, three, we have to make a guess or an estimation about the quantity of these nouns. So the nouns that cannot be counted easily are called uncountable nouns. I hope students, you have developed a very good understanding about countable and uncountable nouns. And you can now solve the exercise that is given in your syllabus. The exercises from your book Grammar and Usage, it's on page six. I hope you have your books open. That's very good. Now let's start. The question is, put the following nouns in the correct columns. We are provided with a list of 20 nouns. It is a mix of countable and uncountable nouns. And the task is that you have to make two columns, one for countable nouns, and the other for uncountable nouns. That's very good. You are very quick learners. So I'm giving you a few seconds to mark your answers. And afterwards, we will solve it together. I know you are very good students. That's very good. All right. Now let's move on towards the answers. And let's see which words are countable nouns and which are uncountable nouns. So students, you must have look at your list and uh, you have tried to find out the answers. Now let's do it together. First of all, we are going to discuss about the countable nouns. Goose, pet, hospital, nurse, banana, doctor, Fireman, penguin, cobra, truck. So as you can see, all these things are very easily countable. We can count them in numbers like one, two, three, or hundred. That's why they are called countable nouns. Now look at the next one that is uncountable. Glue, salt, rain, coffee, powder, gas, oil, floor, 
grass, dust. If you look at these words, you can see that all these nouns are so difficult to count in numbers. We only have to make guess and estimation about their quantity. We cannot count them in numbers like countable nouns, one, two, three, four. Now we will move on to next exercise. I hope so far you are quite clear about what are countable and what are uncountable nouns. The next exercise is again from your book, Grammar and Usage. It is on page number seven and eight. The question is, Match the words in the box with the uncountable nouns. The list provided to us is of countable nouns, mug, sack, bottle, carton, jar, tube, tuft, bow, tin, cup. In this exercise, we will learn how uncountable nouns can be counted in terms of estimation with the help of countable nouns. These countable nouns will help us to make an estimation and guess about the quantity of uncountable nouns which in actuality cannot be counted. The first sentence is a dash of grass. As you can see in this picture the grass growing in the garden it is very difficult to count the number of stalks you can see on this ground. But first, if we take out a piece of soil from this garden, we can count or I make an estimate of the stock of grass on that smaller chunk of soil that how many grass stalks are growing. It is called a tuft of grass and it will look like this. So if you look at the bigger picture, you can make an estimate about the number of stalks of grass growing in smaller area of the garden as compared to bigger garden which is uncountable. A dash of coffee. If you look at this picture it is too difficult to count how many beans of coffee are placed on this but with the help of a countable noun that is a cup of coffee we can have a clear estimation about how much quantity we want to discuss or how much quantity of coffee we are talking about. So a cup of coffee gives a clear idea about the amount of coffee required. A dash of rice. The grains of rice again are quite difficult to count but if we use a countable noun from the list that is sack of rice it makes the idea quite clear that how much rice we are talking about. A dash of blue. If you look at this picture, it is too difficult to count how much blue is laid on. But if we use again a word from the list, that is a tube of blue, you can have a very good idea about how much quantity of blue one is talking about. So we are seeing that how countable nouns help us in developing an estimation about the quantity of uncountable nouns. A dash of noodles and the countable noun that can help us is a bowl of noodles. So again a very good estimation about the quantity of noodles. A dash of milk. Milk is liquid form. It is too difficult to count or maya but this carton, the countable noun, enables us to have an idea about the quantity of milk we want to discuss. A dash of jam. Jam again is an uncountable noun because it cannot be counted easily. The countable noun jar of jam helps us in knowing the quantity of jam we want to discuss about. A dash of beer. It is a drink used by known Muslims. So you can see that the liquid coming out of the can, it is too difficult to count its quantity or measure it. But the countable noun mug develops an idea about how much quantity we are talking about. Again, a dash of wine. As you can see, this liquid again cannot be counted. But this bottle 
gives an idea about how much quantity is under discussion. The last is a dash of milk powder. Powder, again an uncountable noun, which is too difficult to count in number, but this countable noun tin enables us to have an estimation, a guess, an idea about the quantity of milk powder we want to talk about or we want to discuss. I hope students, you have developed enough understanding about the use of countable and uncountable nouns and how uncountable nouns can be defined more clearly with the help of countable nouns. So students, keep practicing, keep revising your concepts of grammar because it needs a continuous practice. Take care and if you still have some questions regarding this topic, you can always ask them in the comment box below. Take care, keep practicing, and I love this.